Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about what's called the Intermediate Value Theorem from Calculus. We're going to go through the theorem and explain why it works and what it means and all that good stuff. So the Intermediate Value Theorem. This is one of the big theorems uh, in, in mathematics, especially in calculus. A theorem is something that's really, really important and has been proven. So. Uh, the Intermediate Value Theorem is one such theorem. It deserves the name theorem. We can abbreviate the Intermediate Value Theorem by using three letters. We can just call it IVT. So the Intermediate Value Theorem says the following. It says, suppose, I'll abbreviate suppose, just suppose, you have a continuous function on a closed interval. So f is continuous, I'll just put cont, on the closed interval a comma b. Okay. And the values of the function at the endpoints are not the same. So f of a is not equal to f of b. So those are the conditions uh, from the intermediate value theorem. So if you have these two conditions, then for any number between these two, right? So then for any, I guess we can use k, between f of a and f of b, Right, so we can assume f of a is less than f of b, or you know, when we're talking about this. So for any k between these numbers, or it doesn't really matter, I guess. Like this could be negative four, this could be negative ten. So any number between between those two. So whenever you have a number between f of a and f of b, so for any k, then we can find. So then for any k between these, then we can find a number c. and a, b, such that, st means such that, f takes c and sends it to k. So given the continuous function on a closed interval, uh, where, the m, where the values of the endpoints are not the same, if you take any y value between these two, right, um, you can find the number c in the interval such that f of c is equal to k. Let me, let me show you what that means, like graphically. It's actually really, really simple. Uh, just looking at a picture, uh, will make a lot more sense. So let me, uh, let me here. I guess I can do it here. I'll do it here, then I'll do, it, I'll do it again. So let's say here's A, and then here's B. And then let's say this is F of A, and this here would be F of B. Okay, F of B. Okay, so F of A is not equal to F of B in this picture. Now this function is continuous, so I have to connect the dots, so I'll just do this. Okay. And I, I can't have any holes or breaks because it's a continuous function. What this is saying is given any number, uh, between f of a and f of b. So for example, say I pick um, this number here, okay? That would be my k. That's a number between f of a and f of b, that there is a value of c such that f of c is equal to k. Well, obviously, right, you can just take that value there. Let me do a bigger picture so you can see it a little bit better uh, so it makes a little more sense. So let's draw it again up here. So here's a, here's b, and let's say here's f of a. And then here's maybe way up here, it's, it's f of b. So IBT says that for any number between f of a and f of b, so say the number here, k, you can find a value of c such that f of c is equal to k. Well, in this case, here's k. So k, k, k. So in this case, there's three values of c, right? There's three distinct values of c. I'll call them c1, c2, c3 such that f of each of these values gives you k. Let's do another picture, just so you see it. So here's, here's uh, a, here's b, uh, here's, um, let's see, let's make, let's make this, um, that this is b, I guess I need a graph here. Mm, let's, do, let's do this. So let's make this f of a this time, and let's make this f of b. So this time you see the case where f of b is smaller than f of a, right? Let's you know, see if we can break the theorem. Well, we can't, right? We can't break it because it's a theorem, right? It's true. <laughs> so say I pick a k here. Well, in this case, boom, there's our c. So f of c is equal to k. So it's called the intermediate value theorem. It's basically saying a function that's continuous on a closed interval takes on every intermediate value, right, between f of a and f of b, right? It takes on all intermediate values uh, between, those, between those numbers. Um, so the typical problem you would do in a math class uh, 
with IBT is finding C. Let's do a simple example. I'll just make one up. So here we go. So let's uh, say we have a function f of x equals x squared. Uh, and this inter uh, on, we need an interval here, right? We need to give a, uh, an interval. Let's do it on negative 10, 10. It's continuous. And so find the value of C such that, well, given any uh, value, any y value between f of negative 10 and f of 10, we should be able to find C, right? So such that f of C is equal to, um, let's say, 4. That is a value between f of 10 and f of negative 10, right? Uh, x squared is a parabola. looks like this. If this is 10, then 10 squared is 100. And this would be negative 10, okay? So the value of 4, right? If you pick 4, 4 is way, it's not drawn to scale. There, there's values of C, right? In fact, there's two values of C such that um, f of those values is equal to 4. So C1 and C2. Let's find those values. So how do you find these C values? Well, all you have to do is plug in C for your x, right? And then you just take the square root of both sides, and you get C equals plus or minus 2. So these are the two values such that uh, f of those values gives you 4. Right? Let me do it again over here so make sure you can see it. So here's x squared. Here's 10. Here's negative 10. That would mean that this is 100. Okay. So we're, we're cutting off the picture right there. And the question is, given the number 4, again, this is not drawn to scale, what are the values of c that go to the number 4? Well, there's two values, 2 and negative 2. Right? f of 2 is 4, f of negative 2 is 4. So that's the intermediate value theorem. Um, I hope that made sense. And the videos that follow, you have better examples, more, you know, more interesting examples of findings. I just wanted to do a simple, silly example uh, to show you how to do it. So I hope that made sense. Thanks for watching.